Okay, hi there, welcome to a quick video. We're going to go through a worked answer to a 15 mark essay question, essay style question, which we went through in, in our class today. Uh, it's uh, for those of you doing year two micro, and it relates to economies of scale and consumer welfare. Here's the question, evaluate the view that most of the benefits from economies of scale in industries such as telecommunications, food retailing, online streaming platforms, flow to companies, and their shareholders rather than consumers. So it's really about the economic welfare consequences of economies of scale. You don't necessarily have to use the three industries mentioned in the question, but most students, I think, probably would. The key is to build two strong uh, KAA knowledge application analysis paragraphs, two evaluation points, and for 15 mark with Excel, that's all you have to do. So my first point, internal scale economies, occur when there are increasing returns from expanding the scale of production in the long run, leading to a fall in average costs. So start with a nice clear definition, then a bit of application for a business such as Netflix with over 150 million subscribers. Good to have that kind of background knowledge comes in handy. One economy of scale is making full use of technical economies. That's uh, production economies such as huge capacity servers installed and uh, used to stream their new content. Then a connective phrase here, this leads to a fall in average cost as new users are added to their network because the marginal cost of an extra subscriber is pretty low and therefore the average fixed cost will decrease. So nice bit of analysis there. Build the analysis as a result. By the way, these phrases here, as a result, this leads to our connective phrases. Great to use. Netflix can move down the long run average cost curve towards the minimum efficient scale. My analysis diagram, a bit of flagging there, shows that the impact this has on producer surplus, shown by rising levels of profit. Uh, and consequently, Netflix will see a rise in profits, which, depending on the objectives of management, can lead, then lead to increasing dividends and a growing share price, perhaps, for equity holders. So the key here really is to build a chain of reasoning, a bit of application. That's what the paragraph looks like uh, if you add everything together, those component parts. Definition, application, build the analysis. Okay, so a good, clean start to the question. I would put in an analysis diagram at this point. You could actually start to answer with an analysis diagram. Here's a diagram showing scale economies. I've, I've actually simplified things by just assuming the average cost, the marginal average cost is the same. Constant returns, constant marginal cost business. So the initial profit maximizing price is P is B at output Q1. Uh, if there are big scale economies, if you can achieve economies of scale, that brings down the unit cost of production to MC2 because AC2. And after scale economies, the profit maximizing output expands to Q2. You charge price PH, and as a result, there's a bigger level of consumer surplus, AGH, and also there's a higher profit for the firm equal to the area HGIF. This would be the diagram I would draw. Uh, I could actually start my answer with a diagram, but probably build it into the text of the answer. And it's a good diagram because it shows economies of scale. Uh, and it shows the impact on price and output and profit. And crucially, it shows the impact on consumer surplus and producer surplus, two aspects of important aspects of welfare. Then evaluate. Whilst in theory, it's shareholders who benefit most. In practice, consumers might also gain. This is because, a nice collective phrase, a fall in average cost gives a business the opportunity to cut their prices. For example, I'm going to use here uh, food retailing. The German... Supermarket chains, Aldi and Little, otherwise known as the deep discounters, they've expanded at a fast pace using their monopsony power to achieve commercial economies of scale when they're buying their supplies from food manufacturers and, and farmers. This means they can cut prices in the stores, which brings about an increase in consumer surplus. Price discounting is particularly important for families on below average incomes who may have low savings, uh, who you know, oftentimes are vulnerable to to high levels of debt and high interest rates on that debt. So one can argue that the economies of scale, which ultimately make household products more affordable, can have a progressive effect on social welfare. So this is my evaluation point. Uh, although producers do benefit, if scale economies lead to lower prices, then consumer surplus goes up, and that's good news 
for for families perhaps on on low incomes and that's a strong evaluation point then build oh by the way uh, Aldi now appears in the uh, the list of the top 10 retailers in the world based on estimated global retail sales in 2020 so Walmart's the biggest they've just sold Asda by the way a UK firm Amazon is only still only half the size of Walmart uh, but Aldi now makes an appearance my second KA point is that a second benefit, by the way, this is a good exam technique, uh, make it really clear, okay, a second benefit of an internal scale economy for companies and shareholders is that scaling production can increase their market power. This is because investing in machinery, for example, mobile phone networks, industrial farming, allows a firm to grow market share at the expense of competitors, and if they have more market share, that gives them more pricing power which in theory will bring higher profits. And Netflix has, has actually used uh, the market power to gradually, I think, increase their monthly subscription prices in the UK and, and in other countries. These profits can then be used to prevent the entry of new rival suppliers. For example, a mobile phone operator might sacrifice some profits in a price war if a new entrant tries to take away the market share. As a result, consumers will not benefit because a monopoly will develop. And uh, some economists are actually working that those big digital platform businesses, Facebook, Google, Instagram, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, are perhaps, perhaps too big. They're big economies of scale, but perhaps they have too much market power operating in the interests of their shareholders rather than consumers. However, one can argue that consumers benefit from the higher profits of scale businesses. So our first point was that prices, consumers may gain from low prices. Uh, profits also have a purpose, and this is because businesses can reinvest their profits into investment. My example there is Netflix putting billions into new content and telecoms firms investing in 5G capacity, bandwidth. As a result, uh, consumers can benefit from faster download, download speeds, increased quality of products, and economists will call it an increase in dynamic efficiency, provided there's sufficient competition in the industry. So even if, even if you've got producers operating at scale, big companies, Apple versus Samsung, uh, Netflix versus Amazon Prime versus Disney Plus, etc. Providing there's sufficient competition, prices will probably be kept low and may fall in real terms. In this way, the balance of benefit might tilt away from shareholders towards consumers. So what I've done here is I've built a four paragraph answer, one analysis diagram, clearly making use of cost and revenue curve analysis. And that's the way to top marks on that kind of question. I hope you found that useful. I'm going to be writing and producing and presenting lots of worked answers in the weeks and months to come for, for different mark questions. Okay, thank you very much indeed.